So, cross talk. So, any, so, you know, you're talking about different types of capacitances, uh, capacitance between two adjacent wires, capacitance between intermittent, you know, wi one wire above, one wire below, and so on. So, the capacitance that we were talking about or characterizing till now was static capacitance, where we said that uh, this is the total capacitance where lines of fields are there, and there is no transition specifically happening in either A or B. There is a constant flow of current through A, through B. This is the steady state value. But in reality, we will have our signals toggle. That is where we will be able to give stimuli or you know uh, test our circuits. So let us say there's this wire A and there's this wire B and uh, wire A grows from zero to one. Wire B at the same time wants to go from one to zero. What would happen? Sir, so because of capacitive coupling, uh, the other wire uh, and the wire that is going upward would also want the other wire to go, go upward. And 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 it would become a vice versa in the case of B wire. So basically, the effective capacitance that it will see between each other, so it will kind of double. Yes. So what happens is that when the transitions on the two wires are uh, opposite in direction, we understand that uh, the effective capacitance that we will see is slightly higher than regular. If everything was quiet, it could have simply gone up at a particular pace. But now, since the other wire is going down, it would slow it down as if the capacitance is higher. So, I'm not able to get this point. Like... So, due to coupling, because of coupling, the, the two wires will start to influence each other. A is trying to go up, B is trying to go down. So because B is trying to go down due to this coupling capacitance, this A will now also try to go down a bit. So whatever rate at which it was going up, it will no longer be able to go up at the same rate. It will go at a slower rate. Similarly, it was trying to go down, but A was going up. So it would try to pull B also up. And B will actually fall at a slower rate than what it was targeted to be. Are you so, able to see that? So, sir, it is basically both the transition times so of both the signals are getting impacted in this way. Yes. Okay. But transition time getting impacted essentially means for, for a circuit designer that RC is increasing. So, R, R is not changing. So, what do we say? That we say that due to Miller effect, capacitance is changing. So, uh, when I say that uh, transition time, when you say the capacitance is decreasing, so I would that will lead to propagation, right? Not the transition. I'm not able to understand you said that. What you said just. No, abhi jo humne slide mein dekha, what were we talking about? 0 to 50% delay. So, what is that? Transition delay to hai. Okay. Okay. Anna? So, what we are essentially saying is that uh, let us say, uh, you know, B is constant. And on A, you are bringing about a transition. Okay. The C effective is C ground plus C adjacent. Now, if B is switching alongside A, hmm, then what happens? Because A and B are both switching together, they, they do not, they appear to be same wire. So this C adjacent kind of vanishes from the picture. Okay. But when they are going in opposite directions, then just as we saw, this C adjacent kind of doubles up. Both try to slow each other down. So what we are saying is that there is this Miller capacitance factor which gets multiplied with C adjacent depending on how my other signals are behaving. So, sir, when this when they are uh, toggling in opposite directions, so first I take the effect of A and keep B constant. So I take it as one effect and then vice versa. That, that, that's why I'm saying twice, basically. I'm taking the effect of both A and B separately and then adding them together. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, 
okay so this middle capacitance factor is something that you should be aware of when you route wires when you you know lay wires next to each other so if you know that there are two signals which are bound to go in opposite directions you better space them apart so that c adjacent reduces but if there are wires which will typically run together in parallel you can keep them close also excuse me sir yes mother sir this constant vdd means that a and b are running same are running different currents are uh, mm -hmm. running same different voltages but they are running same uh, constant voltages no 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 so a is toggling or let us say b is toggling and a is constant the other one signal is toggling the other is constant oh okay sir. got it sir. okay Sir, yes, the pump. Yes, sir. Suppose uh, it's a very big circuit, and uh, we someone is making way out, and uh, they don't know. Uh, like, do we need to? Uh, am I doubt is like that? They don't know that they they will be talking opposite only. Then, uh, uh, basically, do we every time have to know each and every minute detail of the uh, very big circuit? So that other person probably you will never be able to make out the punk you know sometimes for example if you were designing a memory then you know that at any given point of time only one word line will go up okay ha huh. or at the output of the decoder only one of the signals will go to one the others will remain zero so some circuits you can predict at other places you may not be able to predict okay so when you are able to predict you do something when you're not able to predict you do something else for example if if some signals capacitance you just want to be constant you will then shield it you will shield it from other place other wires so typically memory ke andar for example there are two or three decoders that run parallel to each other mm -hmm. so in between those decoding lines you know one set of decoding lines and the other set of decoding lines there is a shielding okay so that okay. all that we can do okay what is important is to realize that the static capacitance that you typically see is not really the only capacitance so this becomes that. yeah this yeah. becomes very important when you are making layouts for uh, for analog circuits for example you are making circuits for uh, layouts for pls or uh, even sense amplifiers for that matter in a memory mm -hmm. because there you want capacitance to be predictable but then if it can change simply because of its environment uh you could be at risk mm -hmm. okay so sir, sir okay you yes, sir uh sir can we say that breaking a large device into too many fingers can uh, increase the cross talk no the gate and so no because uh, uh, for a large device breaking it into fingers uh, then both a and b will always switch in parallel with each other nahi right? Okay. Because they are in parallel, na? Nah? All these transistors that you have now made, they are parallel with each other. The gates are shorted, sources are shorted, drains are also shorted. Oh, so yes. this middle capacitance will not bother you at that time. Okay. Yes, I understand. Yeah, Priyanka. Sir, I want to know, like, uh, if one wire is affecting another wire, so like, what is the use of minimum DRC then, like? इतना पेपर विद यू Yes, sir. Yes. So just draw two lines parallel to each other at a spacing of one micron. Okay. 
One micron is the thickness of your hair. Can you make them? No. Or do you think they will start to touch each other? I can't. I can't make it. Is like they will start to touch each other, huh? Yeah. So how 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 closest can you make them without touching each other? That is DRC. That is DRC. It is DRC is about manufacturability. It is not about electrical behavior. What we are talking about now is electrical behavior. Okay. Are you able to see this? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sir. Sir Randeep. I'm breaking it into finger like uh, they just asked. Uh, then in that case, it is a kind of smart thing to do since uh, my uh, both the signals would go in same direction and the capacitance would uh, eventually decrease. Yeah, that is why we discussed breaking devices into fingers <laughs> because it, it 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 can help many times. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so you will see there is a sweet spot there. You break it into too many fingers, that also doesn't help because then the overall uh, parasitics because of sidewall capacitance start to increase. Just do an experiment, you will see. Okay, paper pay karke dekh sakte ho. Meher, you had a question. Yeah, sir, what? Are the implications of this process that can be made uh, face during the layout and application? I'm sorry, the Vasa Pucho. What are the implications what, of? What are the implications of uh, crosstalk? Implications of crosstalk? Uh, let us say uh, you are running an analog signal, which is small signal in nature. Mm. Yeah. Just toggling by four, five millivolts, 10 millivolts. Hmm? Yes. And uh, over there, you have this Miller capacitance crosstalk coming into picture. And the adjacent signal is a digital signal going from 0 to VDD. Okay. What would happen? Um, the small that 4 or 5 millivolts, yeah. the real signal that you had will simply vanish. You will only yeah. have the crosstalk related disturbance there, okay. noise there. Okay. Huh? So one has to be very, so we are digital course, but even in digital course, we have implication on delays. In an analog course, you will see crosstalk is, can kill your circuit completely. Raghav? So, so basically this Miller capacitance factor is saying that the greater it will be, the greater the crosstalk will be, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. It's a measure of crosstalk effect, you can say that. Sir, this Miller capacitance, is this being calculated through Miller's theorem by breaking this top capacitance into two capacitances between ground? Um, estimated like that, yes. Okay. Okay. So that kind, kind of brings us to a closure of devices. Now, this was a very important section of the course where we talked about MOS capacitors, MOS transistors, and also interconnects. So uh, unless we know the bricks and uh, you know the bricks and mortar that we have to use, we will not be able to make houses. Hana? So we have just understood the strength of different kinds of components, the weaknesses of different components, and now we will start to use them in our designs. Hmm? The first and the simplest design that we know of is an inverter. All of you know what an inverter is? What is an inverter? 